Hello, I'm Karen Reckham, Division Director of Medical Oncology and Associate Director of Clinical Research at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. I'll be talking about EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor resistance, both the progress and the challenges. There are multiple mutations that occur in the EGFR tyrosine kinase domain. The majority occur in exon 19 and exon 21. Today we'll be focusing on the sensitizing mutations and the resistance that occurs. Several studies have evaluated second and third generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors versus the first generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The most significant outcomes occurred with osimertinib when compared to gefitinib or olanotinib. Dacamitinib also showed improvement in overall survival, whereas afatinib showed improvement in progression-free survival without an improvement in overall survival versus gefitinib. Osimertinib has become the standard of care for EGFR-mutated non-small cell lung cancer, especially in the United States. And this is based on the improvement in progression-free survival by about eight months, the improvement in overall survival, and the favorable toxicity profile when compared with erlotinib or engifitinib. In order to try to delay or overcome resistance that occurs with EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors, some strategies have evolved including the combination of chemotherapy with EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibition. These have been performed with first-generation EGFR TKIs, and in the NEJ009 study, there was an improvement in overall survival for patients who received gefitinib with platinum pemetrexid versus those who received gefitinib alone. And in the TMC trial, again, chemotherapy with gefitinib showed a superior overall survival compared to gefitinib alone, suggesting that this may be a viable option for patients. Another strategy that has been evaluated are EGFR TKI therapy and vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitors. There are multiple studies that have been evaluated. Across the board, we've seen improvement in progression-free survival. This is with erlotinib and gefitinib and drugs like bevacizumab and ramucirumab. When these studies look at overall survival, we do not see significant improvement in overall survival. Toxicity is increased with the combination and so is cost. We await the next generation of trials where the comparator is osimertinib to evaluate whether these strategies may be an improvement over osimertinib alone. Here we see the progression-free survival of multiple first-line studies in the EGFR-mutated non-small cell lung cancer setting. We have first-generation EGFR TKIs in blue, and generally we see a 10 to 12-month progression-free survival. Osimertinib is in orange with an 18-month progression-free survival. Comparable results are seen with gefitinib and chemotherapy, seen in uh, gray, and with ramucirumab and erlotinib as seen in yellow. Again, we await the next generation of trials evaluating with the standard of care osimertinib as the control arm to see if these are viable options or combination therapies are reasonable in the frontline setting. And the problem with osimertinib is as good of drug as it is and the prolonged progression-free survival and overall survival are significant benefits most patients develop acquired resistance. Multiple mechanisms of acquired resistance have been described, and we see secondary mutations, most frequently C797 mutations, also L718 mutations, HER2 amplification and HER2 mutations, ALK fusions, MET amplification, PIK3CA mutations, even KRAS and BRAF mutations and alterations have been seen. Contrasting that with patients who receive erlotinib, gefitinib, or afatinib and mechanisms of resistance, where the most common mechanism of acquired resistance is the T790 mutation. And that generally occurs in 50 to 60% of patients. HER2 amplification is also prevalent, MET amplification with or without T790M. PI3 kinase, BRAF, KRAS, and other pathways. So we know that acquired resistance mechanisms differ by line of therapy. 
The resistance mechanisms seen to second line osimertinib include T790M combined with multiple mutations, C797S frequently seen, and 7L718 mutations frequently seen. MET amplification, HER2, and other bypass pathways. I think the significant piece of mutations seen after first line osimertinib is that there's a large majority, nearly 50%, that we don't have a mechanism of resistance. This shows that more data is needed for us to understand the best ways to overcome resistance to osimertinib. Resistance mechanisms, again, do include secondary mutations, but we don't see T790M. Met amplification, um, anywhere from 7 to 15%. Overcoming resistance takes novel strategies and some of the strategies we see include bispecific antibodies. So amivantinib is a fully humanized bispecific IgG1 antibody that targets EGFR and CMET. The potential benefit is overcoming resistance through both inhibition of EGFR and CMET signaling and receptor degradation and also the ADCC function. Amivantamab has been evaluated in multiple types of EGFR mutant resistance. In patients with multiple types of resistance, a response rate of about 30% was seen, and this included multiply treated both T790M and C797S mutated patients. In those patients post third generation EGFR TKI, most commonly osimertinib, the response rate was about 30% and again, included patients with C797S and several patients with CMET amplification and some without any identified EGFR or CMET-based resistance. Another strategy adds EGFR TKI therapy to amivantamab, and this study used lacertinib, the third generation EGFR TKI, in osimertinib-resistant chemo-naive patients and response rate was 36% in this population. Another strategy is antibody drug conjugates, especially the HER3-directed Petrumab deruxtecan. This is a HER3 antibody drug conjugate composed of a monoclonal antibody and a topoisomerase 1 payload. The biomarker is HER3 expression, which is highly common, about 80% in EGFR-mutated tumors. The early efficacy data shows response rates of about 25% and median duration of response of about seven months. Of note, there is about a 5% interstitial lung disease that was seen. We await further evaluation of efficacy. We also have the Empower 150 study, which is the only study that has evaluated immunotherapy specifically in EGFR-mutated non-small cell lung cancer. In a subset of patients, they found an improvement in response rate, about 70%, and an improvement in progression-free and overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.61, making this a viable option for patients who need cytotoxic therapy for EGFR-mutated non-small cell lung cancer. Patients also should be evaluated for small cell lung cancer transformation. When we are evaluating for mechanisms of resistance with liquid biopsy, for those patients who have no mechanism of resistance or those who have rapid progression, evaluating for small cell transformation is very important and may be up from 4 to 15% of patients with resistance. Very early on, we see RB1 and TP53 loss. This has been described in multiple studies. So the future of EGFR TKI resistance, there are more than 500 ongoing trials seen in clinicaltrials.gov. We have on-target mechanisms evaluating first and third generation EGFR TKIs, uh, even in combination second-generation EGFR TKIs, and then we await these fourth-generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors that may overcome both T790M and C797S mutations. The anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies and bispecific antibodies, looking at our off-target 
mechanisms of resistance, combination therapies to block MET amplification and HER2 amplification or mutation, ERAF, KRAS, RET, and TREC, and others. The antibody drug conjugates are promising, chemotherapy combinations, evaluating the best way to give PD-1 therapy or PD-L1 therapy, and anti-VEGF therapy has high interest in this, in this population. And other EGFR-TKI combinations are being evaluated. Thank you.